Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop. For Friday, March 26th, this is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in 160 days. The game against Michigan in 246 days. The Buckeyes will hold their fourth practice of the spring football season today. Yesterday, we got a chance to talk to some of the linebackers. Tony Gerdeman and I recorded a Buckeye Weekly episode all about that yesterday, so make sure you check that one out if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. Today, though, we are going to talk about the future. My guest today is Buckeye Scoop recruiting analyst Mickey Walker. He has been crisscrossing the state and the country for the last couple of weeks. I finally found a time when he was sitting still for 15 minutes and could could, uh, come on the podcast. So, Mick, thank you for uh, finally sitting down somewhere and joining me. Yep, no problem. Always a joy to join you on the show, Tom. Now, one of your uh, one of your recent trips was to North Carolina. That was a couple of weeks ago, I think. At this point, um, you got to see Benji Gosnell. He is a 2022 Ohio State tight end commit. Um, they are actually playing their high school football season now in the spring in North Carolina because they didn't play last fall. So you actually got to scout a game in person in the spring. That was fun. Um, what were your impressions of Benji? Oh yeah, Benji. Is, first off, Benji is a great kid. Comes from a, in a great program that has a ton of success down there in East Surrey. They just won last time there was a season, which was not this past fall, but fall before that. They won a state championship in the 4A division in North Carolina. And the way the divisions work is 4A is the smallest classification. And sometimes when you watch a game of Benji's film or when I got to see him in person, you could tell that that's the smallest classification. But Benji performs at such a high level against that competition that it doesn't really matter. In the game that I went to alone, he had over 150 all-purpose yards. 70 yard kickoff return, over 50 yards receiving, over 50 yards rushing, a, a touchdown rushing, and a touchdown receiving. I mean, the guy really does it all. And it's it, when you were looking at the Ohio State tight end offers for the 2022 class, New Benji was the guy they really liked. And I was like, all right, why do they like this guy? He's not like some five star tight end, doesn't have like this pristine, like, like freak physique or whatever. Why, why did they like him? And but as we've seen with Ohio State and Ryan Day, they love to use 12 personnel and they love tight ends that can not only go tight end, but an H back, but a slot receiver, but a guy that can line up and essentially be a fullback in the backfield and do all these things. That's what Benji can do. And seeing him do that live, you can really understand why Ohio State was so heavy on this guy and why they held him regard as one of the top tight ends in the country because they, he can fit exactly what they look looking the tight end to do in Columbus. Well, Benji was just one of the guys you saw down in North Carolina. You had a fantastic Mick at Night column last week that was uh, on our Ask the Insiders board for our Buckeye Scoop members, talking about a couple other guys you saw while you were down there. That is worth a read for Buckeye Scoop members. And also, uh, if you're not a member of Buckeye Scoop, hey, mm, might be a good time. Just saying. Uh, Things are starting to open up all over. We talked uh, on yesterday's show about the OSU spring game, obviously. Sounds like there's going to be a decent-sized crowd there. Uh, That is true, though, for camps as well. You have gotten to hit a few of those recently and gotten to see a lot of different players um let's just go start with one in uh, western ohio it's a you know southwestern ohio that kind of corner of the state has produced a lot of uh, talent for ohio state recently you got to see a camp in springfield so who are the guys who popped out to you at that uh that camp you went to in springfield yeah most definitely each and every class you can tell there's sort of an area that might might be heavy when it comes to talent this past cycle obviously you had jack sawyer a guy's come out of that but you also had um, ben chrisman Jaden ballard guys come out out of Northeast Ohio, and then you had some Cincinnati guys, but typically one part of the state, and when it comes to all around college, talent is heavy, and I really believe that Dayton is probably the heaviest part of talent, area of talent in 2022, and you could really see that this past weekend um, when it comes to the talent at the camp that um, Mike Robinson and Force and Goal Athletics put on, but really, you can, before you can even talk about some of the 2022 guys I saw, you got to start with 2023 wide receivers, Anthony Brown out of Springfield, this guy that Mark wrote about last week. And we saw, I saw him at Best of the Midwest. We saw him at a camp a few weeks ago. Anthony is active and going at every single camp he can because he, he, he's a guy that is going to kill out of camp. He doesn't have the greatest frame, but I mean, he doesn't have the greatest amount of measurables, but he's got a great build, a great frame. And he's a guy that can put up legitimate 4 4 speed on a 40 time. But when it comes to what he, and he won the fastest man competition this past weekend, which was evident um, by the impact of what we saw on a 40 time and whatnot. But when it comes to, drills route running being a, a true wide receiver anthony is just continuing to grow and grow and grow and typically ohio state hasn't been one that goes to the springfield program and gets a ton of guys it's just not been a program they recruited much but with anthony you really have to consider it because when you look at the top five guys in ohio top five top six guys in ohio each and every year if they're ohio state caliber they're ending up in columbus and once you get past a uh, sunny styles a brand vernon a luke montgomery and then obviously josh padilla Joshua Padilla, who just got offered by Ohio State out of Huber Heights Wayne, is another guy. 
that Ohio State holds in a high regard. If you look at the top five, you got to start talking about Anthony Brown in that top five discussion in Ohio for 2023. And he's a guy that Ohio State is really looking closely at because of that speed. Other prospects that were there is Springfield safety, Delion Briley, who I just wrote a story about two days ago. He's a guy Ohio State that really likes. And um, when Mark and Bill came out with the ranking, somebody posted on the board sort of comparing how Buckeye Scoop ranked the Ohio guys and how some of the other outlets had ranked the Ohio guys. And Buckeye Scoop, Bill and Mark had put Delion inside the top 15 in Ohio. And a lot of people, were, I guess, were sort of um, misunderstand, like didn't truly understand why that was. And it's just if you get to watch Delion in person or if you even watch his film, he's a guy that fits exactly what a lot of colleges want right now and a, and a cover one safety a guy that can be a center fielder back there, roam everything. And that's another. That's why another guy, he's another guy Ohio State is looking into at Springfield is because he might not be the five-star prospect, but when you're looking at puzzle pieces for Ohio State's defense, Delion is a perfect player to fit in there. And that takes his value from maybe a, a mid-tier three-star, how some people have him. And it can skyrocket him all the way up to a, five, a four star when you're looking at talent and fit in Ohio State scheme. Other than that, there were some other 22 guys, 23 guys I like. I'll, mitch, I'll throw out the name Cameron Swiger, who's a guy out of Anthony Wayne High School up in um, Northwest Ohio. I actually came down, even though I'm going to be up in Finley this, this coming weekend. He came down and he, he had to show out because he, he's going to be on spring break during the time where I'm in Finley. But he was a guy in 2023 that I, I feel pretty comfortable saying is the number one quarterback in Ohio. And he spun it real well, had a lot of confidence. And just showed a live arm with a lot of with a big cannon. There's a ton of other guys there, but those three guys are the ones I really want to highlight and mention. I will drop the name Tion Hunter. I don't we don't need to talk too much about him, but it's 2025 wide receiver out of Huber Heights Wayne. And I think he's a guy that when it comes down the line, you and I will probably talk about him more and more as we actually get to the 2025 class. I'm sorry, 2025 is just hilarious to me. Like that's come on. Come on, we can't possibly be talking about 2025 guys right now. I remember when uh, Danny Clark committed to Ohio State in like 2013. I was like, 2017. Wow, that's crazy far in the future. And now, yeah, eight years later. Yes, we're all getting old, even Mick. Uh, well, as you mentioned, this weekend you are heading to Finley. Uh, just I think that's up Route 68 from Springfield, I believe. Just a little ways up the road from there. Um, who are you looking forward to seeing there? Yeah, so the biggest, the biggest guy I'm going to be able to see and talk to Last week, I got to talk to CJ Hicks, who was at the camp, but he didn't work out, had no reason to work out, but he showed up to support some of the guys that, that worked out from that camp. I go to his gym and he trains with this coming weekend, another guy that's not working out because he's got an injury, and Luke Montgomery, the 2023 offensive tackle, offense, um, defensive lineman out of Finley High School. He's going to be coming out to his home school. He, tore, he has a meniscus issue that he's been dealing with since the high school season, but he is going to be there supporting his guys, supporting the high school program there. And he's a guy that I'm really interested to talk to because he's in just like we mentioned Joshua Padilla, we mentioned Brennan Vernon, we mentioned Sonny Styles. Luke Montgomery is the fourth guy in Ohio that has gotten an Ohio State offer in 2023. It's just going to be great to see, talk to him, pick his brain, him and his dad. They're great people up in Northwest Ohio. And really, that's the one area of the state I haven't been to. I've been down to Ironton, which takes you down to Southern Ohio. I've been to Cincinnati times, times, Cleveland. Northwest Ohio is the area I haven't necessarily hit yet, and it's going to be great to go up there and see some of those guys. Talk to um, Luke Montgomery. I'm also going to make a stop a wrestling stop actually because i'm i've just been really falling back into wrestling recently after the postseason once we sort of get to um the spring and which is the olympic style season i'm gonna make a wrestling stop to see the top 2023 guy in ohio and a guy by the name of joey blaze who might just make the all-name team when it comes to the prospects you get to talk to looking like the top 2023 20, wrestler in ohio just won his first state championship at 133 138 pounds at the division one level which is the highest classification in ohio and be great to see him talk to him um and we got more wrestling to talk about, which I, I'm, I'll set you up for, and then you can bounce it back to me. There you go. Yeah, every time we, we uh, ask people on the board, like, which Olympic sports do you want us to try and cover more? Wrestling is always right at the top of the list. Mick is, Mick is one of our guys that absolutely will do that. Um, and, you know, that's, I mean, that's a program that won the national championship in 2015. We're national runners-up in 2017, 2018, 2019. Finished net ninth in the uh, NCAAs this year. Uh, but I mean, you were saying on the board, like, it sounds like there could be some changes on the way for that program coming soon. Yeah. First and foremost, anybody who follows the wrestling program knows that directly tied to it is the RTC program, which is where all the guys for a short synopsis, college and high school wrestling focuses on a folk style wrestling, which is a little bit different from what they do in the Olympic style wrestling, which is freestyle and Greco Roman. In those styles, you need to train those year round. You do yearly competitions. There's different world competitions. And obviously the climax is the Olympics every four years in the summer which is coming up 
this summer in Tokyo, and they're having the Olympic trials here in a little over a week. But that RTC program is the back end of what college wrestling is. A lot of these guys graduate, go to the RTC program. And that's really been the thing that's making a lot of transition because, I mean, we saw Kyle Snyder head out of it a little, not too long ago. Miles Martin, who's another guy that was really talented in the, um, in the freestyle field, is heading back to New Jersey. To, and just that there's been a lot of exodus coming out of the RTC program uh, at the, when it comes to just the athlete level. It, it sounds like, and it, you never want to speak in definites in this field. And I know, you know that, Tom, when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to college sports, you never want to speak in definites. But it's sounding like there could be some coaching staff mix up. And I just just for the sake of I don't know if this is going to be publicized by the time this podcast comes out. I'm not going to drop any names, but it could seem like there's going to be an opening when it comes to that RTC um, position out in Columbus. And they're going to have to be looking for a guy that can help do that, help control that program. But on top of that, they're also looking for a guy. Any of any wrestling fans that watched the NCAAs this past um, not too long ago, yeah, last weekend noticed that Ohio State had a lot of problems when it comes to mount wrestling. And that's another thing that Coach Tom Ryan at Ohio State has talked about and knows he wants to fix. So there's really a few there's a few th- things that Tom Ryan has to juggle this this coming offseason when it comes to coaching staff changes, when it, whether it's the RTC, whether it's the actual coaching staff at Ohio State. Those are intertwined, but it's just going to be interesting to see how he balances this. There's going to be some new blood coming in. There's going to be some exodus. And – it's a program that has a lot of rich tradition. Ohio, Ohio is one of the best states when it comes to producing high school prospects for wrestling. So there's going to be guys that want to fill this job. And you, you're going to hope that Coach Ryan passed the wide net, picks the best guy. There's been some names thrown around. If, if a position were to come open, maybe a Logan Stever, who's a four-time champion at Ohio State. Um, and Reese Humphrey is another guy that was an All-American at Ohio State. Probably runs the RTC program in New Jersey for schools like Rutgers and Princeton. If something was to happen at the RTC program, um, you you could look and see those two guys getting looks, but also they're going to cast a wide net, try and find the best guy. But yes, this is going to be a big off season when it comes to the wrestling program and just sort of retooling and getting through the next phase of after having that era of the Kyle Snyder era and sort of just retooling for the future as they try and chase down a Penn State, even in Iowa, a top, not just the Big Ten, but the national leaderboards at, at the college wrestling level. Well, uh, thank you, Mick. Thank you for uh, taking the time to join me today and uh, providing a lot of insight on wrestling. Because I, you know, I know the first time I covered the Ohio High School Wrestling Championships, it was like this is a lot of people, and they are way into it. It is one of those sports that I feel like probably flies under the radar a little more than it should. So, uh, we're very happy to have you there to cover that for us, as well as all the wonderful football recruiting stuff you're doing as well. And uh, make sure you can you uh, check out BuckeyeScoop.com this weekend and then early next week, as I'm sure Mick will have a bunch of great stuff from his trip to Finley and the camp there. And uh, we have a bunch of great stuff on the site. Uh, after I finished recording with Nevada Buck yesterday, he dropped a whole bunch of new stuff on the our Ask the Insiders board, a whole new round of practice reports, lots of great stuff. You can find that all at BuckeyeScoop.com. Just sign up for a membership today. Give it a month. The price of a lousy chain store pizza. It won't give you indigestion, and it might just give you a lot more knowledge about Ohio State football, basketball, and yes, wrestling than you ever could have dreamed possible before. So do that. Sign up at BuckeyeScoop.com today. Make sure you check out all of our great podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify. You can just search Buckeye Scoop to find all of those. Uh, we just added a new podcast to the network this week. Dominique, who I had on uh, last week, do, who covers Florida recruiting for us, just dropped his first episode of the uh, of his new show. You can find that there. But you can find all of those great shows just by searching Buckeye Scoop. And uh, finally, check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. We have uh, all of those interviews with the linebackers that we did yesterday. You can find those there. But uh, also all of our great podcasts. When Mick goes to a camp, he's got video. Like, it's all there, all in that one spot. You can just subscribe right there at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. That is free to do, and it just brings you uh, brings you notification every time we post a new video. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great weekend. We will talk to you on Monday.